Hello. Are you hearing me? Yes, we are able to hear you. Okay. Let's start. Uh, what is the uh, most appropriate way to treat the patient hallucination? A 74-year-old man who has uh, Parkinson's disease diagnosed four years earlier uh, is reviewed in the neurology clinic with originally hallucination over the past two months. He, she, he believes that there are people in the house trying to poison him and he has been hitting uh, out at his wife. He has uh, mask-like faces and there is obvious increased tone, more marked on the left than the right with tremor. What is the most appropriate way to treat uh, of the patient's hallucination? Amortadine, haloperidol, quetiapine, rivastigmine, and uh, ropinirol. Rivastigmine. Yesterday we discussed this. No. Quetiapine. Uh, why? Uh, because uh, in one of the discussion we decided that rivastigmine is better compared to dopamine agonist, right? There is Parkinsonism. Yeah, no, that's what in one of the discussion we, we thought that it is better, reverse stigmine is better than others. Just we'll go through the discussion. Quetiapine is the answer in one, one of the paper. In one of the paper in past test only, reverse stigmine is the answer. I didn't, I was not able to get why. Even in case of uh, Leo, uh, supra uh, Leo body dementia. Right. Dementia with Levy bodies, you are telling. There it is, uh, reverse stigmine. Yes. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah. So both uh, quetiapine and clozapine are prescribed uh, for psychosis symptoms in patients with Parkinson's disease. They both reduce the hallucination in patients with the disease. Although the clozapine is more effective than quetiapine, it has the design purpose that it requires regular hematology testing. The lowest effective dose of antipsychotic uh, should be used to minimize the risk of adverse effect. <laughs> Which of the following is the most likely cause of the patient hematuria? Most likely cause. So, uh, which of the following is the most likely cause of patient hematuria? So, three plus blood, no protein negative, creatine okay, sodium, potassium okay. 28 year old woman who is uh, who has sickle cell uh, trait uh, present to the emergency department with single episodes of painless hematuria. She is usually well and uh, she takes no regular medication. Her temperature is 36.9 and uh, BP pulse okay, evidence of non tender okay, there's no mass. Investigation hemoglobin uh, 101 and platelet, sodium, potassium, everything okay, just uh, bleeding 3 plus. Uh, which of the following is the most likely cause of the patient hematuria? Acute interstitial nephritis, uh, IgA nephropathy, renal, renal papillary necrosis, renal vein thrombosis, urinary tract infection. Renal papillary necrosis? Yes. Patient is, uh, has sickle cell trait. Yeah? Mm. <clears throat> sickle cell anime causes which type of uh, nephrotic syndrome? Sickle cell causes... Uh, Mm, FSGS. Yeah. FSGS, huh? Yeah. I'm not sure. Mm. Sickle cell causes many things, actually. Just wait. I check the point. I didn't get okay. We know that everyone we know that it's left atrial eczema. Huh? Just read the scenario for uh, 43 year old woman admitted ED following left uh, temporoparietal stroke. She uh, tells you that uh, she has felt unwell over the past few uh, months and gradual weight loss, palpitations, and night sweats. BP 155 by 90, pulse 90, atrial fibrillation. There is a chest is clear. So CRP raised and echo is here. Left atrial mass. 
This patient suffered the embolic stroke with the echo shows the ball shaped mass in the left atrium uh, with a heterogeneous structure on ultrasound. Given the elevated CRP feature of the chronic illness, uh, the, this is consistent with the left atrial myxoma. The lack of murmur here is the explained by the presence of atrial fibrillation. Overall, the murmur is only heard in the approximately two thirds of the myxoma patient. Ascension is the indicated following the period of recovery after acute stroke uh, to prevent the further events. Which of the following is the next step to manage the patient ulcerative colitis? 28 year old man who has recently been diagnosed with the ulcerative colitis presents with the ED, abdominal pain, fever. Uh, he is opening his bowel uh, 20 times a day with diarrhea, blood, and mucus despite taking uh, 40 mg prednisolone per day. His temperature 38.4, blood pressure 110, 75, pulse uh, 100. Abdominal general tender, active bowel sound present. Uh, hemoglobin 9.7 and WBC raised 14.2 uh, and platelets, sodium, potassium low, creatine, okay, CRP raised and uh, plain x-ray, uh, 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 abdominal x-ray. You are planning for abdominal x-ray. Which of the following is the next step to manage her ulcerative colitis? Patient getting uh, who is drugs? Prednisolone. Huh? Okay. Intravenous cyclosporine. Intravenous hydrocortison, uh, oral azathioprine, oral mesalazine, rectal mesalazine. Hydrocortison patient already getting. So, option A. Uh, cyclosporine. cyclosporine. Let's go. Let's go. Let me wait one second. One second. The patient is already taking a hydrocortison and it's uh, no, no, unresponsive. Patient is taking oral prednisolone. Why not IV hydrocortison? Uh, IV, I think IV. Yeah, acute situation is this. Hmm. IV, I think so. Hmm. Hmm. I have a hydrocortisone as a dose of 100 milligram four times a day with the most appropriate next step according to the BTS, uh, BSG guideline and alternative the methylprednisolone 60 milligram per day also delivered IV. Methylprednisolone is thought to have the less uh, mineral corticoid effect of the hydrocortisone, the less likely and therefore be the associated with the hypokalemia. In the event there are no improvement of uh, in symptoms uh, by three days, then the cyclosporine this point eh? in the event that there is no improvement in symptom by the three days then cyclosporine infliximab and progression to surgery should be considered so what is the most likely cause of this patient anemia bilirubin 29 they are hence body present right. eh? bite cell and hence body both are present g6 speed i think so uh, poor trimoxazole patient getting huh, for ETI. So G6 period deficiency. Uh, risk factor associated with the G6 period, uh, hemolytic, prima queen, nitroporan twin, quinolone, especially ciprofloxacin, and sulfur groups of drugs like tri, uh, uh, sulfonylurea, sulfur, uh, methoxazole, like this. Also causes Depson eh? and Depson rays. Which of the following is the most useful investigation in this patient? Most useful investigation. 32 year old woman who has type 1 diabetes present to the emergency department with nausea, vomiting, syncopal episode, uh, which has uh, origin significantly over the two to three weeks. Uh, she has also reduced her insulin dose significantly, but despite this, uh, she is suffering from hypoglycemic episodes. Her blood pressure 110 by 80, pulse 84 regular. She has a postural drop to 20 millimeter marker on standing. Body mass index 20. And here hemoglobin 10.2, WC platelet, sodium low, potassium raised, creatinine 132. Which of the following the most useful investigation in this patient? So SCTS measurement, uh, TTG antibody, dexamethasone suppression test, random short synectin test. It can be a decent. Yeah, short synectin test. Although the morning cortisol may eat itself exclude the adrenal high insufficiency where it is above the what, 350 and absence of acute illness, the short synectin test where uh, synthetic SCTS is given. It is the gold standard investigation to confirm the biochemical adrenal insufficiency. Levels of cortisol above 420 uh, 30 minutes after the administration of synectin rule out the adrenal insufficiency. Uh, 
Adrenal insufficiency is more common in patients with the pre-existing immune disorder such as type 1 diabetes, speed with this nausea, vomiting, syncope, pushra, hypertension, hyponatremia, and hyperkalemia are seen here. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? So CRP 25. Uh, Okay, a 41 year old woman presents to the clinic complaining of uh, slowly progressive weakness affecting her shoulder, hips, and uh, hands and feet over the past two months. Uh, she also uh, complained of loss of sensation in the both hands and feet, and pains and needles, and her four out of five power weakness affecting ankle dorsiflexion and hip flexion. There is uh, also weakness and shoulder girdles, and there is loss of fine touch and proprioception affecting the feet. So here, uh, just CRP is 25, and which of the poly the most likely diagnosis? CIDP, GVS, MS, osteomalacia, myasthenia gravis. CIDP? Yes, CIDP. CIDP is characterized by the slowly progressive motor and sensory symptoms uh, present for two months or more before diagnosis. Weakness is typically is, uh, is a non-length dependent pattern and meaning uh, that the both distal and proximal muscle group are affected. Distal and proximal. Sensory loss is seen here with the number or numbness and poor coordination well recognized sequently. Although the symptoms is, are usually symmetrical, asymmetrical or pure sensory form, uh, CIDP are also seen. Diagnosis can be difficult with nerve uh, conduction studies, uh, lumbar punctures uh, just, uh, just showing uh, lymphocytic uh, pleocytosis and MRI uh, being useful studies. Lumbar puncture showing the lymphocytic pleocytic MRI being useful investigation and corticosteroid intravenous immunoglobin plasma actions are typical intervention. Okay. Oh. You are asked to see a 74-year-old man who is being managed to, uh, to the end, uh, end of life care for the esophageal carcinoma. He is much more, uh, and appears to become educated and when he is turned uh, by the nursing staff. Uh, he is also uh, distressing uh, his relatives. Which of the following is the most appropriate intervention? Glyco Glycopyrrolate, haloperidol, mirazolam, morphine, and last one, resperidone. Midazolam. Midazolam or haloperidol. Midazolam. And care. Yeah. Midazolam and care. And midazolam is the intervention of choice of the terminal hesitation and seizure. It can be given uh, in the bolus 2.5 to 5 milligrams subcutaneously and converted to later into 24-hour dose to give by the syringe driver. Bacal or sublingual administration or alternative method to administer the administration in the appropriate patients. <laughs> Haloperidol mirazolam is preferred, however, it can be given the bullous dose and is easily convert the series drive over the 24 hours. Uh, which of the following genetic mutation is the most likely cause? A 38 year old woman comes to the oncology clinic following diagnosis of breast cancer. Uh, her sister has been diagnosed with the breast and ovarian cancer, and her father died at the age of 44, uh, 42 from the pancreatic cancer. You suspect familial cancer syndrome. So BRC1. BRC1. Mm. Mutation in the BRC1 gene associated with the development of range of cancer, including pancreatic ovarian and breast cancer. Pancreatic ovarian breast cancer. This absence of the rule. Uh, this is because the, uh, the role of BRC1 in, in the uh, deoxyribonucleic acid repair and the mutation in the gene lead to increased DNA damage. In particular, these drives are increased risk of breast and ovarian cancer in women. BRCA2 is an unrelated gene has, uh, that has a similar function in the BRC1. BRC1, BRC2 gene mutation increases the risk of developing breast cancer around 80%. BRC1 increases the risk of ovarian cancer 55%. Risk of ovarian cancer increased uh, less by the BR, uh, BRCA2 mutation around 25%. Oh. Diagnosis. You are asked to see the 72-year-old man who has uh, become confused in the orthopedic department or uh, 48 hours uh, after admission uh, for routine hip replacement. He is uh, shooting out and claiming 
uh, there are a spider uh, crawling over the wall and uh, over his skin. He is severely agitated and sweating and trying to hit out uh, at the nursing staff uh, with his uh, stick. Uh, and uh, BP 125-90, pulse 84 regular, here uh, 102 hemoglobin, 110 uh, MCB, wrist, so platelet low, alcoholic figure, and sodium, potassium, CRP, okay, urine, 1 plus uh, protein, or blood negative. Which of the following the most likely diagnosis? Charles Borny syndrome, complex partial seizure, and delirium tremens, dementia, urinary sepsis. Delirium tremens, no? Yeah. Yes. Hmm. The patient was admitted for the routine hip replacement to become, become confused. So, uh, some two days uh, after admission, he has micro macrocytic anemia, low platelet, which rises the possibility of alcohol abuse at home. Delirium tremens with the uh, visual, auditory, and tactile hallucination is commonly seen uh, some 48 to 72 hours after the last consumption of alcohol. Uh, which fits with the patient, uh, patient presentation, hesitation, symptomatic activation also present. Withdrawal medication using agents such as uh, chlorodiazepoxide is crucial in managing the condition. Chlorodiazepoxide and vitamin, B vitamin replacement should be in, in, instigated. 49-year-old woman who has neurosarcoidosis and bipolar disorder present to the uh, clinic complaining of polyuria, polydipsia. She takes uh, lithium for control of her psychiatric symptoms. Her blood pressure 125 to 82 and her pulse 80 and regular. She has a postural drop 10 mm standing and BMI 29. So here, okay. Uh, sorry. It can be nephrogenic DI. Can be. Urine osmolarity post post deprivation 280. So, and uh, urine osmolarity post DVP, uh, the desmopressin 820. So, uh, osmolarity. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Neurosarcoidosis caused. Osmolarity yeah. increase raised, yes. This is due to yeah, sarcoidosis. Due to sarcoidosis, sarcoidosis causes sarcoidosis, histoplasmosis, tuberculosis, causes cranial diabetes in severus. And even uh, that uh, Langerhans cell histiocytosis also. Yeah. One of the questions. Yes, yes. yes. What is the most appropriate intervention for patients of psychiatric symptoms? A uh, 22-year-old student is brought to the ED. His uh, flatmates are concerned as he had not been seen uh, for uh, some days. When they entered in uh, his room, he had covered, uh, to, uh, to covered the window in the uh, tin foil and written a number of math mathematical uh, equations on the wall. He is known to uh, regularly smoke uh, cannabis and he refuses examination and tells you that his government are trying to broadcast into his uh, brain. He is appeared to accept the tablets. He, uh, what is the most appropriate intervention for patients with psychiatric symptoms? Cannabidiol, uh, diazepam, haloperidol, risperidone, and belnafixin. Risperidone? Risperidone, risperidone. Mm. Schizophrenia, no? Diagnosis. Schizophrenia. Mm. So this patient has the psychotic symptoms and is uh, heavily a cannabis, a cannabis user. Psychosis related to the cannabis use is well described in the self-medications. By patient with the schizophrenia using cannabis management of the, is the same with an atypical antipsychotic such as risperidone, the most appropriate initial intervention. Once stab stable, this patient should be on uh, for cannabis use if possible. These psychotic uh, symptoms then resist. Gabapentin and cannabinoidal uh, to have both been shown to the re to reduce uh, the cannabis use in patients with the cannab uh, to cannabis use disorder. What is the most appropriate intervention? Most appropriate intervention. ESR 95. 72 year old woman present to the clinic uh, to, with the stiffness uh, of her shoulder and hip. Uh, she says this is got uh, this uh, this has got worse over the past three months and it is most severe for uh, severe for the first uh, two to three hours uh, each morning. She has uh, hypertension for which she takes the remi pill and blood pressure under 39 by 80 pulse 72 regular. She has obvious shoulder stiffness and BMI uh, 22.5. Yeah, I think. Yeah. 
So we can give prejudice loan 12.5 first. Then we increase 25. <laughs> so first we give 12.5, then update it to 25. If required, as a therapy once daily. As a therapy. <laughs> A 22-year-old man is referred to the clinic with a progressive renal dysfunction and bilateral renal mass. Uh, he is an uh, adopter and does not know if, if he is at risk of any genetic condition. So hemoglobin 10.104, WBC platelet, okay, everything is great in race 212. So here CT scan given, there's multiple cyst like lesion on the liver, kidney, no? Yeah. Lovulated or not? No, it's cystic. It's polycystic. No? It's hypercake. Hypercake means cystic. Uh, cystic, yeah. Polycystic. And even in the liver, there are cysts. Yeah, also liver. Yeah. So this is how the mode of inheritance patient underlying condition. Dominant. So well dominant. The CT scan shows very enlarged uh, kidneys with the evidence of multiple cysts given the patient's chronic renal impairment. Uh, this fits with the diagnosis of arrhythmia dominant PC. ADPKD patients develop slowly progressive renal failure, hypertension over 90% patients with the disease have developed renal cysts by the age of 20. Around 85% case uh, ADPKD uh, designed uh, as uh, PKD1 occurring uh, because of mutation in the chromosome 16. The 21 year old woman is admitted to the emergency department after being given an antiemetics by a friend. She has suffered from the diarrhea and emerged vomiting for the past 24 hours. Was given the pill by her, her platmate to, uh, to her, uh, help her as uh, a symptom. She has uh, torticollis and uh, grimacing, and uh, she is looking up and is unable to stop doing this. What is what is the patient's most likely? Metoclopramide. Yeah. So like the domperidone, metoclopramide is a D2 receptor antagonist. The symptoms uh, just seen here are consistent with the acute dystonic reaction result of metoclopramide therapy. The torticollis has a grimacing and oculogenic crisis. Anticholinergic drugs like prosecleading is the treatment of just acute dystonia. A uh, 29 year old woman presents to the emergency department with jaundice, and she also has uh, dark urine, uh, the right sided abdominal pain, and itching. Uh, she returned three weeks uh, earlier from the holiday to, the, um, to Morocco, and uh, that was much booked at the last uh, minute. A few days before, before the jaundice developed, she tells you that uh, she, she suffered from the symptoms of low legs illness. So here, hemoglobin okay, sodium potassium is okay, ALC rest. And uh, alkaline phosphate, uh, little bit raised, late 231, bilirubin also raised. So which of the following is the most likely Hepatitis diagnosis? A. Sorry? Why not hepatitis A? Happy only. ALT is so raised. Hepatitis A only, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's no renal involvement. Here in uh, renal involvement, yeah. Hepa A. No, ALT will be raised, so raised in usually three causes only. Toxic, ischemic, and some... Autoimmune. Uh, Effective autoimmune can be also there. Yes, yes. Autoimmune. But it is uh, acute, acute presentation. Yeah, yeah. Uh. Because she's a pre uh, this one, not traveler. This one. Yeah, traveler. Uh, go to Morocco. Yeah, West Africa. Not. It's a same. Huh? Not. North Africa, North. Okay. Hepatitis A is the endemic in the North Africa, and uh, although it is on the recommended holiday, to holiday uh, to vaccination, it is likely this patient missed the being uh, immunized. Uh, given that uh, she booked uh, the holiday at the last moment and the incubation period of the hepatitis A in between two or six weeks, and pre uh, presentation with the uh, frank uh, jaundice is usually preceded by the flu like uh, illness. Transaminous can uh, remain elevated uh, for a month, and although uh, clotting is usually remain normal. Patients should put alcohol uh, until liver and gem have returned to, to baseline. That is important. Mm. <laughs> 
A 54 year old man is visited to a gastroenterology clinic following admission with a small upper gastrointestinal hemorrhage. It transpires that uh, he has suffered from the indigestion for the last 12 to 12 years and a small gastric ulcer found on the endoscope with the biopsy confirmed the presence of a meltoma and uh, is finally positive. So, which of the following the most likely intervention? Uh, the chloramphucil, cyclobenzene. Radication therapy. Second line will be your this one, okay. Uh, uh, this uh, cy cyclorytax is second line. If it is not eradicated in the first place, cyclorytax, etc. Use combination of prednisolone for people with the residual high. Yeah. This is important. We, we skip this, but this is important. No? Yes, yes. Cyclosomal, brain testing, rituximab. Okay? Second line. Okay. Yes. Uh, which of the four is the most likely diagnosis? Cutaneous, Lyme, uh, Stern, Typhus, Wells. Okay, so question first. 22 year old student who has been uh, to, to backpacking in the Thailand uh, to presence to the emergency department with the lessons in her left arm. She has just returned from the uh, airport and feels unwell with uh, the fever, headache, muscle ache, and uh, cough. He, he also has the abdominal pain, vomiting, and maculopapular rash. Examination reveals the axillary inguinal lymphadenopathy and his temperature raised 38.5. So there are coarse crackles uh, at the left base and oscillation of the chest. So here, um, more or less, CRP just raised and uh, for the following the most likely cause, cutaneous leishmania, Lyme disease, scarf typhus, tick bone, and coprophytes, Wells disease. Scarf typhus. Yes, scarf typhus. The scarf, scarf. Thailand, Thailand. Thailand, yeah. If it is from Africa, what should? Oh, there's one more diagnosis, no? What is the diagnosis? Yes, yeah. No, rickets only. Which one? Which one? Riketsi was in this one, uh, US. Yeah, Rikets Rikets yeah. And there was an indigenous disease in uh, Australia. I forgot the name. Something strange. Hmm. In uh, this one, uh, scrap typhus is found. This one in Nepal, in India, Northeast India. Southeast Asia, mainly. North. Huh? Southeast Asia. Hmm? Yeah, Southeast Asia means, uh, I, is it found in Bangladesh? We, I, I'm asking for this one yeah. exam also. And is Himalaya. Nepal, Himalaya. Uh, no, yeah, all this, uh, your hilly terrain, you will get. But of course, in these other parts, like Thailand, etc. Hmm. Okay, Scarp typhus is caused by the bacterium uh, to Orientasia susa gamasi, uh, which is spread by the bite of the larval mites known as the uh, chichigars. It is endemic uh, to area of the Southeast Asia, including part of Thailand. The symptoms including calf, muscle ache, abdominal pain, vomiting, rash are all consistent with the diagnosis. Doxycycline is the intervention of choice. What is the most appropriate next investigation to establish the diagnosis? So, three plus protein, uh, blood negative. Uh, a 55 year or four year old who has uh, a focal FSGS and a neutropenic range of uh, protein urea, emergency department left low in pain and marked origining on her peripheral edema. Blood pressure, uh, pulse, okay. Left, uh, there is a left loin tenderness, abdominal palpation, the pitting edema of the mid thigh bilaterally. Uh, hemoglobin low and creatine 192, protein 3 plus. What is the most appropriate next investigation to establish the diagnosis? So, uh, Doppler ultrasound, renal angle pain, renal vein thrombosis. Doppler. Yeah. This patient has the nephrotic syndrome, which leads to increased risk of thrombosis because of passive, uh, passive clotting factor in the urine and leading to hypercoagulable state. In this case, the loin pain and marked increase the proteinuria associated with the renal pain uh, thrombosis. 
Grayscale ultrasound uh, demonstrates the renal enlargement with the uh, hypoechoic uh, cortex. Doppler ultrasound is the best way to then uh, to confirm the diagnosis. Doppler findings include uh, uh, the reversal of our, uh, arterial diastolic flow, absent venous flow, uh, thrombus, uh, visualization within the lumen, uh, elevated renal artery, uh, the resistive index. So, uh, uh, 87 year old man presents to the clinic with a chronic cuff and left sided pleuritic chest pain. Chronic cuff, left sided pleuritic chest pain, despite taking the tramadol and paracetamol. He, he has been uh, referred by the GP with an abdominal x ray and uh, COPD, uh, his left ventricular failure, and, and he continues to smoke 30 cigarettes per day. He, uh, he can walk only 100 meters uh, on the flat and climbs uh, the stairs only once per day. His pulse is 95, atrial fibrillation, and uh, the blood pressure 135 by 90, and uh, his poor air quit, uh, with oscillation of the chest. Peak flow uh, rate measurement is 170. So hemoglobin uh, 118, and W okay. Chest X-ray cardiomegaly, left hilar mass constitutes a bronchial carcinoma. So uh, he refuses a, uh, further investigation. Which of the following is the most uh, most appropriate next step? Immuno, immuno, uh, immunotherapy, palliative chemotherapy, radiotherapy, oxycodone are uh, required, and uh, tumor uh, embolization. Oxycodone. I think oxycodone might be COPD patient. Mm, what is the patient? I didn't see actually. It will be kind of a treatment only, but it will not be palliative. Oh. They are not told palliative. No, I'll Actual say. Uh, okay, we should give some palliative therapy to this patient, yeah. I think. Okay. I think radiotherapy, radiotherapy or chemotherapy. I'll... Palliative chemo. Chemo. Okay. Create any stop on zero nine. No? What about pain management? Why was he brought in here? Chest pain. Chest pain. Okay, okay. No point in going for immune therapy now. <laughs> or you'll give for pain or what? Yeah. Okay, pain, pain therapy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Given the man has refused further investigation, has a very poor functional status. Or refused further. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Pain relief with the oral oxycodone is the most appropriate option. Uh, this is a has to set up uh, to from the current paracetamol and tramadol therapy. Uh, although an site may be considered as a part of later uh, of the pain therapy, uh, it is the best appropriate here on account of the patient's renal impairment. Uh, and the fact that he has left ventricular failure should uh, should should he change his mind, bronchoscopy and biopsy to confirm the diagnosis could open up uh, the possibility of the palliative intervention. A 48 year old woman has reviewed in the oncology clinic. He has undergone mastectomy for carcinoma of the left breast and has bone scan to demonstrate metastasis to the right uh, humerus and left femur and reports in a dull egg in the left femur. So, hemoglobin 102 and creatine, okay. Calcium 2.3, ALP 287. So, which of the following is the most appropriate intervention for the uh, patient's bony mats? Hmm. Uh, calcium beta in donors. Slightly uh, high, no? Yes. Creatinine is slightly high. Creatinine, little bit, 132. So, I try to avoid the uh, dronate first. Uh, dronates usually when creatinine is high. Hmm. Depends. Usually on the manufacturers, they write it, do not use below uh, above two okay denosumab is uh, this one resedronate is also there but how do you give denosumab 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 will be a better option i think so why because of the creatinine i'm saying let us see the answer no problem creatinine is not must rest i think that's like creatinine uh, Totally but we do not give a uh, reset runet for this one. Okay. Oh, especially Jolene runet they give. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Donosuma with the rank receptor activator has a nuclear factor kappa B ligand inhibit the reduce the osteoclast maturation and activity. It has advantage at, uh, that it given in the six monthly subcutaneous injection. It study uh, in studies of women uh, with the advanced breast cancer who has proven bony mats. Uh, meta analysis showed that Donosuma was the better than the bisphosphonate uh, at preventing the complication of metastatic bone disease, reducing symptoms, and didn't uh, confer the survival advantage. Even so, the, it is uh, recommended by the NICE uh, as preferred option in this case. Uh, just read once, uh, please, Dr. Sada. Which one? Just read once. Okay. Back, back, Donosuma, that, that okay. line, no? Yeah. In studies uh, of women with advanced cancer, cocaine meta analysis has shown that denosumab was better than bisphosphonate. Yeah, this I think so. I had read. I said once also this one. They prefer more than uh, this one, in, especially in breast cancer sometimes. You, you quoted the other way around. That's why you, there's a confusion. In it. You told the uh, Bisphosphonate was contraindicated or something like that. When you yeah, it. yeah. I was saying the, something mm. in a mistake, but I read that long back. Anyway, yeah, it's okay. No survival benefit. Thank you. But we did one more question like that. They said that in the same scenario, breast cancer patient and uh, there are meds and uh, so creatinine was normal but they choose yeah that the, is i that i think so I, I think so yeah, i think so this answer is yeah. due to creatinine this yeah, this is not that's due to only the creatinine this mm -hmm. is because of the creatinine only I, they should have mentioned in in that fashion the answer can we go to uh, that option bisphosphonate options yeah this they have given only reset on it that is not indicated actually mm -hmm. in cancers Less effective than also. Mm -hmm. okay. so they give mostly uh, we use jolidronate. I use hypercalcemia. Then you'll give, give, uh, you'll give isonildronate or your uh, pamidronate if it is not there, yeah, uh, because they're easy. Mostly we give IV form in this uh, patient, yeah, IV, yeah, pages also. You'll give this yeah. one, yeah, it's not going to work. So, zolidronate was not an option here. Mm. Even though zolidronate was an option, I'll go for denosumab because of the creat creatinine. Yeah. <clears throat> but that is what we do practically also. If a patient uh, comes to us and he's planned Ask for uh, zolidronate, yeah, creatinine we, is already deranged. We, we and always we first that, that check the also, urea yeah. and electrolytes. So if there is a dysfunction in urea and electrolytes, especially calcium, and then you have to actually correct calcium and uh, vitamin D in the first place, actually. Otherwise, you, you shouldn't. You're going to cause much more damage. That is also the guidelines. Okay, uh, which of the following is the most likely cause of the patient's symptoms? A 27 year old woman attends the ED uh, with her five years old daughter. They are both uh, up to date uh, with vaccination. Um, uh, vaccination, her daughter has developed uh, erythematous breast affecting both cheeks and uh, cheeks. Uh, had symptoms of cold uh, around her, uh, cold uh, around one week earlier. The woman has the same rash affecting her uh, face and complaints of joint pains. Examination of the oropharynx is normal and there are no enlarged lymph nodes in the palpation of the neck. Which of the following is the most likely cause of her symptoms? So, epistine barbarous, measles, uh, barbarous 19. Parvo. Parvo, sleep check, slap uh, hmm. cheek. It Had it been uh, a lymph node over the posterior area, it would be Epstein Barr. Measles, uh, because they have been vaccinated, it's not. Hmm. Oh, scarlet is a very rare thing around. Yes. The power has been 19 infection, also known as the slept check uh, disease because of the pattern of the erythema seen here. It is possible for both, uh, to both of the mother and child to be infected at the same times. 
and the pattern of the rash occurring around a week after the symptoms of cold fits with the diagnosis or, uh, or adult may suffer from the small joints polyarthritis uh, which are not seen in these children so b19 specific immunoglobulin igm and igg are uh, available the pcr uh, for the parvovirus the main concern about the uh, parvovirus infection at uh, adult concern the pregnant women Maternal infection is the first time history with the risk of fetal death of 19%. Week, uh, weeks uh, 13 to 20, 20, the risk falls slightly to 15%, uh, is further reduced after uh, week 20 to 6%. 35-year-old <laughs> woman admitted to the unconscious uh, ED following the overdose of 75 milligram amitriptyline uh, tablet uh, and vodka. So 90, 75, 105 regular GCS train and examination. Uh, she has suffered short of tonic clonic seizure. Rhythm is to show the number of uh, ventricular ectopics. Hemoglobin 104 uh, and here is creatinine. Okay, bicarbonate, I think we should give. Mm, here is QRS is 112. So uh, patient already getting intravenous IV fluid replacement assessment the admission into ITU unit. What is the most appropriate next intervention? So yeah. This patient has a TCM, uh, progeny, overdose and signal QRS prolongation and seizure. Uh, these ports are at the significant risk of either uh, further seizure and potentially sustained rhythm disturbance. Correct. Shown acid bus status of sodium bicarbonate is therefore the word. Which of the uh, medication most uh, likely is a problem? Patient, bisoprolol, beta blocker. Mm. So other drugs are beta blocker, gentamicin. Nebula, nebula, NSAID is um, then alcohol, beta blocker, inclusinab, lithium. Uh, lithium, yeah. Uh, gentamicin doesn't cause that. Gentamicin? Gentamicin, yeah. yeah. Gentamicin is contraindicated in myasthenia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 74 year old Richard uh, Gardiner present to the dermatology clinic with uh, the nodular lesion on the left side of his nose. Uh, it looks uh, particularly with the uh, appearance of the telangiectasia uh, vessels arising from the nodule, uh, nodule itself. It is the most likely to happen in the lesion over, over, over time. So local progression without meds, uh, local progression with hematogenous spread, local progression Basal cell carcinoma, it won't progress. Uh, it will progress without any meds. Okay. This lesion described where the typical of the no nodular basal cell carcinoma over time, uh, they may ulcerate and nodular lesions uh, from penetrate more uh, deeply than is the suggested by the size and appearance on the surface. Early accession was recommended because, the, uh, because of risk of local invasion and, and bone deep tissues. Metastasis only uh, very rarely describe the conjunction with the basal cell carcinoma. Anyone can read? At morning, it's difficult to continue. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is having the same issue. <laughs> okay. okay. I can read. Yes, yes. Thank you, Dr. Rangapa. <laughs> <laughs> I barely woke up to attend the session. Which of the following is most likely because of patient deteriorating renal function? Okay. Cyclosporin is normal. Creatinine, uh, one. 255, it has increased from 189. Then uh, hemoglobin is okay, WBC is okay, platelet is okay, sodium is okay, potassium slightly high, urine deep shows, blood and protein. 48 year old man comes to transplant clinic for review. Received three transplant three months earlier for ESRD uh, due to IgA. Blood pressure is 148 by 88, pulse is 75, abdomen is soft, and transplant kidney feels normal. So, what is the reason? Uh, chronic rejection, cyclosporin toxicity, CMV infection. Can you go down? Three years. Six months. Uh, huh? That is recurrence. Three Recur years. Recur Three years. years. Recurrence. Three chronic years. One. Recurrence. Okay. Rejection. So one thing I have a doubt. Like, uh, we know that uh, the acute is, yeah, IG is recurrence channel. I, acute is occur after one month, okay? Before one month, this is acute rejection. 
within one month is acute and after six months is chronic rejection am i correct hmm. so what uh, in between these two periods Sabe one kid. month to six months sabhi ke sabhi ke there is a hyper acute as soon as you put it through within our hyper acute within the ta- uh, that patient on the table on the table on the table yeah reject his kidney on the table and how it has hmm. how it is fine as soon as actually you join the uh, artery and then the connection is made there will be urine produced at the table itself okay uh, what are the findings for that uh, go to the options like sub acute rejection is there is also option look option 5 how can we say that it is sub acute and Nothing. I, I think feel, IgA recurrence is more common. That's why Allah. you are choosing that. See, basically, one. you you don't make a, a timeline rejection. You mentioned, but you have to have a diagnosis. No, you can't just say subacute rejection. Yeah, because I uh, recurrence is very high in these patients, like uh, MPGN, hmm. IgA, hmm. FSGS. Yeah. Okay, IgA nephropathy recurrence. Unfortunately, IgA nephropathy is common cause of deteriorating renal function after transplant in up to thirty percent of patient. I think eighty to hundred percent. That's what we read, no? Thirty to hundred percent. It fits with. No, lower most IgA. common is MPGN. MPGN. The, yeah, most common MPGN. is MPGN. MPGN followed by IgA. After that, IgA. IgA. Then FSGS. Then FSGS. Yeah. Okay. Uh, treatment is difficult for rapidly progressive recurrent disease in a transplanted kidney with high dose steroids and cyclophosphamide. Both are potential options. Okay. We'll go next to the next question. No, oh, okay. COPD. Expiratory limitation of waveform is there. Emphysema. One minute. Go up. But. Uh, no. The seventy-year-old retired plumber is referred to a respiratory clinic for increasing shortness of breath. For past few years, he smokes five cigarettes per day. His flow volume loop is shown below. What is the most likely cause of uh, shortness of breath? But the only problem for me is uh, okay. Actually, I'm facing one. Our our in case of uh, this one is uh, obstructive one obstructive, only. Yeah. yeah. Tip one, so I think limitation of answer might be uh, D or E. No, A. Yeah. A. Why? A. Why not emphysema? Emphysema is obstructive disease. But this pattern is looks like. No, no, that no, is. It is coming out. It is coming out. This is just coming out only. Okay. Emphysema. There is a reduction in effort dependent peak expiratory flow rate. Followed by marked reduction in the descending limb of expiratory loop because of airway collapse. The shape of the inspiratory volume, flow volume loop is relatively normal, although the total volume is reduced. This fits with the diagnosis of emphysema. Please read other option. <laughs> Restrictive lung disease. Shape of expiratory and inspiratory loop is normal, although total expiratory and inspiratory volume is reduced. Next, unilateral main stem bronchial obstruction. Uh, the same as reduction in lung volume, similar to the restrictive lung defect. The shape of flow volume loop is therefore normal, but total volume is reduced. Variable extrathoracic upper airway obstruction. Uh, extrathoracic upper airway obstruction is also with flattening of inspiratory portion of uh, flow volume loop. Also, the expiratory portion is normal. Variable in, intrathoracic upper airway obstruction uh, is associated with flattening of expiratory portion of the flow volume loop and normal shape of the inspiratory uh, portion. Okay, in case of extrathoracic, uh, uh, inspiratory is obstructed, whereas in case of ex- yeah. uh, intrathoracic, expiratory is obstructed. Yeah. Intrathoracic, we can't exhale, and in case of extrathoracic, we can't. <clears throat> Sorry, we can't inhale. Mm. Okay. Next question. A 64-year-old who suffers from constipation presents to ER with colic abdominal pain 
which has worsened over 12 hours, failure to pass lighters, or stool, or, and they grossly distend abdomen. Blood pressure is 122 by 80, B pulse is 98. Abdomen is grossly distended and tympanic, but not particularly tender. Hemoglobin 129, WBC is okay, platelet is okay, sodium is okay. Go down. Potassium is low. Creatinine is uh, slightly elevated. Okay. It looks like a small bowel obstruction only. What is the move? Which of the following is the optimal intervention? Oh, I'll say. Latest this, you decompression. decompression, maybe. That is the best option, I guess. Because we can't give this Sena and the uh, uh, Neil Bow, uh, that is. Uh, nasogastric tube will not work. It will work only in the upper GI obstruction. And the laparotomy and the colonoscopy, you know, first we have to at least try decompression. Yes. Other thing I was thinking of is phosphate enema. What is the role? What is the diagnosis? No, no, no. Of phosphate enema. It, it is obstruction only, constipation related. Uh, the thing it has, uh, it has progressed to small bowel uh, distension also. That SENA causes perforation to this patient. It will uh, cause uh, further obstruction and perforation. It looks like a coffee bean to me. <laughs> it looks like to for my sickle valvular. Sickle valvular. Mm. <laughs> Let's see the answer. All, obviously, it will flat us, flat us tube only. Oh, X-ray is consistent with Sigma valvular. Sigma valvular. Yes. Bean only. Yeah. <laughs> Rigmat valus, which fits the history of chronic constipation, followed by acute deterioration with colic abdominal pain and distension, coupled with absolute constipation. Oh, Urgent nice. decompression by introducing flatus tube with the, when the patient is lying in left lateral position is the intervention of choice. Worsening pain and signs of ischemia, mesentic ischemia, such as passage of flu, blood, may prompt progression to laparotomy. Valus is the third largest cause of colonic obstruction in adults. Okay. Which of the following is the most likely cause of renal impairment? Okay, CK is elevated. A new onset T wave inversion. But I, uh, creatinine is gone up post op. Also, yeah, three twenty two. Potassium is slightly yeah, elevated. Creatinomyelitis. Yeah, no, but why post op? He has a temperature spike. He has seventy year old man. He is reviewed in surgical HD three days after colectomy for a colon cancer. His operation was unremarkable apart from a period of hypertension for around 15 minutes towards the end of surgery. Yes, hypertension, type 2 DM, received a single dose of gentamicin in the post-op period. Three days post-op, his urine output has fallen to 10 ml per hour, his creatinine levels has risen. Okay. Uh, he is also having some breathlessness, he is a per excel and BP is 115 by 60. Which of the following is the most likely cause for uh, renal impairment? If it is gentamicin toxicity, why the CK will be rising? Because of rising creatinine. Why? Why the abdominalysis? No clue. No? Okay. Operation is uh, major operation. Okay, there was there know? was some hypotension around that fifteen minutes. No, no hypertension. Hypertension. No, no. Following. Hypo. Following. Sorry, sorry, hypertension. hypertension. This is uh, yeah. that is the necrosis. Uh, this is gentamicin toxicity only. Multifactorial. There is an intra hypertension is there. In the mm. gentleman, now uh, he has received gentamicin also. All those have pushed creatinine up. CK is raised just because of creatinine has gone up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, we'll see the answer. No. <laughs> <laughs> we are what all dead. New, New eh? interlateral. <laughs> why, why did we miss the ECG? <laughs> this, uh... <laughs> my, my, the clues here to the so, it's very funny it's very funny i'll say you why it's very funny okay um, <laughs> to, for to die to give a proper diagnosis of a myocardial infarction you have to have a troponin not that this one otherwise there was a question in past this only the patient had some ecg changes patient had uh raised creat but uh, i mean say raised uh, ck but normal troponin what is the answer? Answer is unstable angina because it's obviously by universal uh, definition, 
since there is no uh, raised uh, this anthroponin, you cannot define it as a myocardial infarction. Okay. <laughs> Confusing. Clues yeah, here for the diagnosis a... include hypertension type 2, a period of hypertension during the operation, TV venosion and ECG, and marked elevation in CK. Taken together, these factors raise the possibility of a new MI have occurred on the table, leading to 18 as a result of period of hypertension and low renal perfusion. Urine testing reveals the presence of granular cast. Okay, where did they told, told this one? And urine sodium is increased. Carry supportive with inotropes and diuretics, not of proven benefit. But on the other hand, I'll say uh, for the universal uh, definition, uh, you need a troponin mm. raise. That is a primary criteria. And other, uh, this one, no, RWMA, etc., whatever. <clears throat> the other thing with uh, uh, CK is uh, suppose a patient had actually uh, an MI uh, today and uh, his troponin will be elevated till day 12. So CK is one of the very good, uh, this one, differentiator, if the person has another MI on day 8 or 9, something like that. Because uh, it doesn't get, uh, remain elevated for a longer time, right? That is how we practically do it. Okay. What is the most likely cause of the patient's weakness? CRP is elevated. Or the rest of the things are normal. 24 year old. This hiker. one is lying. Hiker. Sorry. Okay. Uh, hiker, left side facial weakness when he woke up from sleep. Usually well, but felt tired. Examination BP looks okay. Pulse slightly on the lower side. He has a facial nerve palsy without bro sparing. So, element type. Very faint circular patch of erythema in the left calf. Hmm. Okay. So, which of the following is most likely cause of patient facial weakness for Lyme's disease? There is a dash. No need to read, right? Next. No need, no need. Which is the most appropriate initial therapy? Uh, blood smear, uh, hemoglobin 129, normal. There is a thrombocytopenia as there. Platelet is 15,000 only. Hemoglobin is 8, sodium is okay, potassium is okay, creatinine is okay. She comes to the emergency department, easy bruising affecting her arms and legs, bleeding when she cleans her teeth. Okay, it's basically ITP with low platelets, 15,000. So you can give oral steroid, I guess. High dose or low dose? High dose. High dose. No, you give high Hello. dose. High dose. <coughs> Always give full dose. 60. Okay. So, redness alone of 0.5 to 2 mg per kg is recommended for initial treatment of ITP. Condition is uh, caused by accelerated platelet destruction. It is also both HIV, hepatitis, and screening for these two viral infections should be considered when patient presents with ITP. Okay, fine. IV dexamethasone who failed to respond to prednisolone or uh, rituximab. Okay. Now we'll go to the next question. Okay, it must be osteoporosis fracture only. Mm, down below. Which of the following is the most likely? Okay. A 78 year old woman runs to ER with severe lumbar back pain, which she says uh, come, off, come on all of a sudden while she was picking her shoes off the floor. She has suffered previous uh, left colas fractures from four years earlier. Her lumbar spine is tender to palpation. There's no motor or sensor deficit affecting the lower limbs. Lumbar spine x ray. There is a disc space looking narrow. Okay. Can you go down? There is a fracture on whatever. Uh, here, I think. Uh, Collapse fracture, actually. Collapse fracture is there. Each initial. This one. This is what? No. Open, open, open. Oh, I don't need to change. L, 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 this part. Okay. Osteoporotic wedge fracture. Which fits with the previous collapse fracture, most likely reduced bone mineral density. 
dexa chan is likely to confirm significantly reduced bm is dexa indicated in this patient dexa scan no, no 78 already yeah, 78 yeah. already yeah. so two fractures we can directly yeah, treat as fracture this was not practically why are you doing this one no? already fracture patient okay there was, one, there was one there was on criteria right Uh, yes 65 the uh, one thing was that the uh, loss of height was there no okay i'm not sure about that yeah uh, to whom to look for loss of height and their alcohol then your family history then fracture police fracture frax tool hmm frax tool na Okay, we'll go to the next question. That is homework for us. <laughs> okay, so frax more than ten percent actually that was okay more than seventy five old with the fracture directly bisphosphonate more than sixty five with steroids uh, I can go for bisphosphonate uh, fracture with steroids more than sixty five and uh, for uh, patients who are on steroid now more than sixty five old. Uh, dex uh, dexa score more than 1.5 we should consider as osteoporosis yes not uh, more than uh, not less than, sorry less than yes uh, yes <laughs> it, it should be less yeah okay so the next question 70 what is the most appropriate intervention there is a mediastinal mass creatinine is okay potassium is okay sodium is on the lower side uh, platelet is okay wbc is okay hemoglobin is slightly on the lower side 73 year old comes to er with confusion worsened steadily over past few days is being investigated for possible bronchial carcinoma smokes 20 cigarettes per day see yeah okay he has left mediastinal mass his bp is 132 by 80 pulse is 72 heart sounds are normal his chest is clear no ankle swelling bmi is 23 has been fluid restricted at home but uh, this has not improved his symptoms what is the most appropriate intervention Doxy, furosemide, metirapone, saline, one point eight percent, tolvapton. I think uh, I'll go for tolvapton. Tolvapton. Yeah. Sodium is low. Okay. Uh, tolvapton is selective antagonist uh, vasopressin V two uh, receptor. It specifically blocks the binding of R A V P at the receptor of distal portion of nephron. Uh, tolvapton is a affinity for v2 receptor is 1.8 times that of native avp urine excretion is increased within 2 hours of dosing and small studies in cr have indicated that increase in serum sodium of around 8 millimoles it is its use is well described in patients with hyponatremia as a result of cr in small cell cancer there one more thing is there in case of uh, hyponatremia management no this european guidelines they don't recommend any vaptans okay basically two reasons are there It will cause sudden hypernatremia, and the second reason they say is they are known to cause acute liver failure. In ESICM, I have read ESICM. I have not read the nice and all. What is the side effect of tolvapton? And that's what a sudden hypernatremia. 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 Second is acute liver, liver degeneration. Oh, well, which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? 19 year old traveling from a traveling family comes to cardiology clinic for review frequent headache and nose bleeds tells you that he is tired all the time as poor circulation on in his feet bp is 145 by 90 high right arm left arm is 100 by 70 pulses appear diminished in the foot there is systolic murmur loudest in the left intraclavicular area subclavian coarctation ियल Just join and post ductal or something like that. Surgery and uh, balloon angioplasty. This one is pre ductal. 
Because a radio radial di uh, difference is there. Yes. So treatment is different actually in both preductal, postductal. One was stenting, postductal, I think so. Okay. Next question. Increase in mat mature meta bromylocyte. This can be due to CML or this can be due to some that one one. Pressed. Okay, we'll read the history ones. A 74 year old is referred to hematology clinic with lethargy, weight loss, and early satiety, which is progressively worsened over the last three to four months. BP is 150 by 90, pulse is regular. He looks pale, left sided abdominal mass and right sided mass consistent with enlarged liver. Hemoglobin is low. There is a very high WBC counts, uh, 2 lakh 21,000, almost as much as platelet with all forms mature. A platelet is 345, sodium is okay, potassium is okay, creatinine is okay. okay CT abdomen, uh, thorax, and pelvis is shown below. There is a heptomegaly, there is a splenomegaly. Okay, which of the following most, which of the following is the most likely uh, cause of the re patient's CML, renal CML. impairment? CML. The patient doesn't have any renal impairment now. No. It's <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. uh, diagnosis is CML. Also. Uh, you know, gradual onset of patient's <clears throat> this, uh, epitospinomegaly is there. Marked elevation of WBC with myelocytes and meta promyelocyte is consistent with the CML. Cytogenesis is. Uh, How do we diagnose this one? CML diagnosis? Immunophenotype. Mm -hmm. Immunophenotype. Low cytometry. Uh, bone marrow plus cytogenetics. No? They are mentioned in the same. Bone marrow, bone marrow is done for uh, going for karyotyping and this one actually. It can be done with the blood film only. Blood mm. film and check for the. No, so that is for CLL, no? Peripheral blow of, uh, by blood. Uh, yes, yes. Marrow. That is for CLL also. In CML also, uh, we do bone marrow only for extent. But confirmatory the... is the bone marrow if any blood cancers like CML, CLL. You have to do bone it marrow. Is not written. CLL it known is not written bone in the BS. It is not written in the B BSH guidelines like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, just in case of once. CLL also we have to cytogenetics like CD59 uh, 15 uh, 15, All these things 19. are done actually. Fish is done actually, not this one. Yeah. This one. Fish is done in this uh, in this disease, CML, no? For checking the translocation. Okay. We'll we'll just check question. once. Uh, I got confused because there was somebody uh, discussing this in the part one group. I was also searching, I forgot that. I'll ask one hematology, don't worry. Okay. Next question. 68-year-old man comes to gastroenterology clinic with anorexia, weight loss for six months. Now jaundice, uh, which has developed over three to four weeks. GPS orange urgent CT. BP is normal. Uh, Hepatomegaly is there. BMI is 21. Hemoglobin is low. WBC is normal. Platelet is normal. Sodium is normal. Pla sodium creat is normal. ALT is elevated, alpha phosphatase is elevated, CA is uh, uh, low. Oh, no, CA is elevated, sorry. Okay. Is male or female? Male, I guess. Okay. Metastatic colon. Mm. Mm. carcinoma with meds. Liver machine. Why not hydrate it? <laughs> yeah, it's not elevated. It's not elevated. There is no any daughter cells are good. There's no image. daughters. <laughs> <laughs> the CT scan, if you give me blindly, I I won't be able to say properly. We love granddaughters, no daughters. <laughs> okay. Uh, you want me to read? No need, I guess. No, it's okay. Oh. 
Mm-hmm. Just a following is most appropriate. Interview. We'll finish See. this now or what? Huh? We'll finish all the uh, rest of the 30 right now, Dr. Yeah. Sada? Yes, yes. Okay. Most yes. appropriate intervention. CT, no evidence yes, of bleed. Yeah, rest of the investigations looks normal. 71-year-old man, type 2 diabetes and hypertension, presents within 30 minutes of onset of expressive dysphagia, right facial and arm weakness, BP is 162 by 95, pulse is 95 beats per minute, ha, no heart murmur and do, so do thrombolysis. Go down. Okay, I'll tip this. I'll tip this. We'll go, I think, no need to read. Which of the following is the most likely cause of patient's lipopenia? WBC, hemoglobin is normal. WBC is only 900. Platelet is uh, normal. Sodium potassium is normal. Creatinine is elevated. You are asked to review a 54-year-old man who is currently managing HDU for PVL staph or his infection. Intensive therapy, ITU staff are concerned as his WBC count has been progressively reduced. And now he has marked leukopenia. Current antibiotics include clindamycin and linezolid. Platelet is normal. Clindamycin-related bone marrow suppression, increased macrophage apoptosis, linezolid-related bone marrow suppression, toxin-related bone marrow suppression, toxin-mediated leukocyte lysis. I'm not sure about the answer. Linezolid. <laughs> But uh, linezolid is more known to cause thrombocytopenia. Thrombocytopenia is normal. Maybe toxin-related, if you ask lysis, me. Lysis, yeah, toxin-related lysis. If bone is the other cell will be decreased. Toxin mediated leukocyte lysis. And this is the first time I'm hearing this. Uh, PVL uh, staphylococci produces a number of virulent factors, including uh, poor forming leukocidin, which causes lysis of P- WBCs. Leukocidin results in myeloid derived cell lysis according to state of cell maturation and level of C5A expression. It also includes monocyte lysis. Hemolysins, uh, gamma, ABC, also produced by PVL staphylococcus, are cytotoxic to monocytes and NK cells. This is thought to be due to CXCR2 and CXCR3, CXCR1 receptors respectively. Okay. For this question, I will say one thing. Uh, like the options, look at the option. They are mm-hmm. saying, uh, in every option, they are saying uh, bone marrow or separation. If there mm-hmm. will be bone marrow separation, there will, all the three lines will be low. Uh-huh. But uh, in the case of the toxin mediated, and I don't know about the increased macrophages of the process. Just in case of toxin mediated leukolysis, uh, they're saying leukocyte lysis. So there will be uh, definitely against the leukocyte deficiency only. Uh-huh. We can go further. <laughs> We don't This know. This is ruling out thing. Yeah. yeah, ruling out. It will be easy. Next question. There is a left-sided gross effusion as well. Hemoglobin is low. WBC is normal. Platelet is okay. Sodium is okay. Creatinine is slightly elevated. 58-year-old woman presents to ER with gradually worsening shortness of breath. Dull left-sided pain over the past 3 to 4 months. It takes beclomethazone in LR for asthma and has IBS, but is otherwise un- uh, well. She has reduced chest expansion on the left. Left side of her chest is dull to percussion with reduced breath sounds. Okay. Go down. Which of the following is the most appropriate as ultrasound guided uh, aspiration? Okay, no need to read, I guess, this one. Okay. What are the next steps after the ultrasound? Do I see? As- yeah. Okay. Uh, which of the following is most likely to be effective? Okay. And uh, this is... Uh, This one is molluscum colon. Molluscum. And they need oh, that yeah, treatment. Yeah, this so one nice. question is need treatment. We can't uh, reassure. Okay. Oh, she completes in swimming, uh, completes in swimming competition. Once the rash removed as, as soon as possible. What is the age? Young age. Young age. She is not pregnant, right? Mm. <laughs> okay. Cryo. 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 As soon as possible, she won't. Okay, fine. Yeah. Cryo is effective in clearing molluscum contagiosum. If lesions are not too widespread, can be used as an initial intervention. Potential adverse effects include scarring and hypopigmentation. Pain from the procedure can limit using children with molluscum. 
topical redness salicylic and uh, koh may be used in clearing the molluscum lesions okay you want me to read imiquamod uh, is uh, used for treatment of molluscum it is not proved to be effective in uh, rct for this reason cryotherapy is the preferred answer uratas will cause pain and hmm? uratas is better hmm is less effective for causes... steering uh -huh. uratas is better but it is uh, painful causing is more why... pain and bleeding That's bleeding. That's why cryo is because she doesn't want all these things. No, patient's preference here. Which of the following is most likely cause of patient salicination? Okay, seventy-six year old who has advanced BM bilateral macular degeneration. Revealed in the ward two days after replacement. Nasser concerned because he suffers from visual hallucinations in the evening. Often when the lights are turned off after ten o'clock, after ten o'clock, sounds bonnet. Hmm. Is he well? Sounds bonnet. Okay, behave normally. Okay, fine. Go for next. Okay, which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Okay, I'll read the question. So, thirty-seven-year-old man presents with retrosternal pleuritic chest pain, which has gradually worsened uh, uh, in the past twenty-four to thirty-six hours, and is undergoing the carcinol. He has suffered from flu-like illness for the past few days. He is a non-smoker who drinks two glasses of wine per week. Okay, blood is okay, temperature is elevated. There is a ST depression. Looks like there is a PR depression. PR depression also. PR depression. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a pericarditis. Pericarditis. Okay. Go for next. Yep. Which of the following is a most likely diagnosis? You were asked to see fifty-four-year-old man with end-stage alcoholic disease in patient in the liver ward. Some twenty-four hours after admitted with variceal hemorrhage, the bleeding is controlled with sterile pressing and variceal banding. Nurse is concerned because he's in, become increasingly drowsy. He's sleepy, but you can wake him up from sleep. Disoriented and confused, most all limbs. Temperature is normal. BP is okay. Heart rate is okay. Hemoglobin is low. WBC is uh, slightly on the higher side. Platelet is uh, low. Sodium potassium creatinine is okay. Ammonia is slightly elevated. Which of the yeah. following is the diagnosis? Let's see. Hepatic encephalopathy. Yeah, hepatic encephalopathy. Doctor Ajwadan, I can read. <laughs> okay, can. Okay. So tired. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, here is which of the following is the most likely cause of the patient's renal impairment? Uh, the urine is protein two plus, blood two plus, creatinine raised, potassium is okay, sodium okay. That's a normal only. A 32 year old man referred to the renal clinic for the elevated creatinine and the blood and the proteinuria on the death stick. He also has a symptoms of asthma, which are poorly controlled despite high dose fluticasone, salmeterol, montecalcast. And the provider grass, uh, which patches on his arm and the legs. His uh, blood pressure is one fifty five by ninety two, and the pulse is seventy five regular. Sound heart sounds normal, and the bilateral gaze on auscultation of chest, and the non tender with no masses. Uh -huh. WBC count is raised. Eosinophilia they did not mention here. Okay, yeah, yeah sorry, there is a eosinophilia. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, EGP. WCC and eosinophils. Uh, Yeah, EGP. EGP. Yeah. One more is no filia with rash. Yeah, AIN. They are prescribed. Mountain. Another one. Cholesterol embolism. Yeah. Cholesterol embolism also because of other reasons like uh, thrombolysis and what happened. Go to the next. Read. Read. Uh mm huh. -hmm. What they want to say? I don't so know. Sora Bhai is sleeping. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Which of the following is the best way to reduce the patient's future risk of urinary tract infection? Creatinine is one thirty-two. Potassium, sodium, platelet. Uh, okay. 
75 year old women present to the clinic following the third urinary tract infection last 6 months infection was sensitive to the coenoxy clap and the symptoms improved after the 7 day course of therapy she has a urogenital atrophy and a small urethral uh, prolapse okay estrogen hmm estrogen tropical estrogen topical yeah okay. topical yeah next question <laughs> 70% so the 45 year old woman who is known to drink the bottle of whiskey per day comes to the emergency department having the vomited 500 ml of the fresh blood she was uh, diagnosed with the esophageal varices um, six months earlier but she was not attained for the surveillance endoscopy her blood pressure is 90 by 50 and her pulse is 110 regular she is tender uh, in the epigastrium and has a uh, soiled herself with melina iv fluid replacement is commenced and the hemoglobin is uh, 88 Uh, wbc is 12.2 platelet 49 and the sodium potassium creatinine is okay so inr is uh, 1.2 which of the following is the most useful additional therapy for this patient iv tolipressin yes iv tolipressin and and sec then fluids because patient is going in shock hmm yeah need to read okay tolipressin no. is a no okay okay go to the next which of the following is the most likely cause of the patient's discolored urine so urine is 3 plus uh, blood and 2 plus protein creatinine okay and this normal 18 year old man emergency department with puffiness of his face and very concerned that he is passing the brown red color urine he has a streptococcal uh, infection completed a course of antibiotics some 10 days earlier so psgn yeah which of the following is most likely to patients skin changes 74 year old man in stage cardiovascular disease comes to the clinic uh, has ejection fraction 23% and yeah defibrillator is done okay gray blue discoloration eczematous rash is important no eczematous rash is also there no yeah this one red color or 10 10 to overlook gray blue cellular plasma and adrenal pardon cellular plasma yeah. the name that one eczematous rash or yes. this gray color gray color is called it's called excursion okay cellular plasma copper like go next want to read this okay both eczema and the slate gray discoloration of sun exposed skin are well described in the patient treated with the amiodarone the level of discoloration and the risk of skin changes appear to be proportional to the dose and the duration of therapy the incidence of skin changes on the sun exposed skin uh, can be markedly reduced by the use of sunblock and this is recommended at the therapy initiation we ask this to hydroxychloroquine uh, for sunblock uh, with the hydroxychloroquine patients also they are also prone to this one yeah. photo so uh, there was a difference between is... uh, photo sensitivity uh, due to this one and one okay okay no sorry photo allergic and photo sensitivity yeah. ah what was the difference since we <laughs> i forgot then in the past medicine <laughs> <laughs> Uh, which of the following is the most it's appropriate the intervention? Surgery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Surgery. Aortic surgery. 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 Aortic surgery. Aortic surgery. Aortic surgery. What are the Aortic other surgery. other other reason? No. Uh, Option. Uh, indication. Heart failure. Indication. The bacterial infection is not treatable. Fungal infection. And uh, size more than one centimeter. Staphylococcus. Yeah. Uh, that is Aureus positive. Staphylococcus. Staphylococcus. Positive. 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 Fungal. 
body she is dehydrated uh, and she will be have she will get admitted and you have to give iv fluid and you can give uh, promethazine in this patient but nothing to be done with the h tsh because it is same receptor yeah because that one because of scd mm. okay next this good uh oh no uh, this one a 44 year old ma- woman present to the clinic uh, yes. complaining of number of disc shaped uh, areas of edema affecting the her scalp is it clear no disc shaped and the scalp face upper chest and appear more mature and have a atrophied with the areas of scarring she has also the joint pain affecting the her finger wrist elbow and the both knees so sle feature along with this one yeah. oh. this one. मल्टीपल जॉइंट पेन आर ऑल्सो सपोर्टिव ऑफ द डायग्नोसिस ऑफ एस एल ई न्यू पैचेज ऑफ डिस्कॉइड लुपस डेवलप एज अ रेड स्केली पैचेज दे प्रोग्रेस ओवर टाइम एट ट्रॉफी leaving this uh, areas of white is scary the lip of the inside of the mouth may also be affected topical corticosteroid may uh, ca- can be used for the manage the skin lesion and our oral hydrocortis uh, chloroquine treat both the joint pain and the skin rash okay oh hmm. toxic chloroquine famous drug you have to check the retina first before giving yeah. this giving this even and though we have there can also be cause uh, there, follow up yeah and also it can cause your uh, cardiac uh, heart blocks okay okay now so which of the following is the most appropriate next step management of our seizure both in the immediate and the longer term the 29 year old woman present to the uh, status epilepticus diagnosis of idiopathic generalized epilepsy mm-hmm. stopped her levetiracetam some 6 months earlier she is trying to get pregnant and she has been given two doses of intravenous lorazepam and her seizure have not ceased so yeah. what will be levetiracetam levetiracetam only she is trying yeah. to pregnant there is one question in uh, past test okay Hmm. She is already in lamotrigine. She is pregnant. She has come to you. What will you do? Lamotrigine, lamotrigine only. Okay. Continuous. So, continuous. 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 Continuous.
Okay, okay. Pragnes. No, if that that option is there, uh-huh. refer to a specialist neurologist or a specialist uh, seizure clinic. Yes. Then yes. definitely that is the uh, answer. Okay, because I Why? think so they will give the. No, no, no. Oh, in pregnancy, uh, they don't want to take any chances. Even don't don't take better. chance in pregnant patient. Okay. Even even suppose a patient comes to. Uh, to you uh, as an ST1 or something uh, like a pregnant patient with diabetes, GDM. You have to refer that patient to a combined antenatal and, uh, and a diabetes clinic. Okay. That is the first thing that actually we should be doing. And one thing uh, in pregnancy, the lamotrigine doses are also changed now. It uh, in, uh, increase the increases. Dose. Have to increase the dose. Increase, increases the dose. You have to increase the dose. Yeah. <coughs> For better management, send to the higher center. Okay. This patient is the status of epilepticus and requires the immediate management to stop the seizure. Levetiracetam, valproate, and the phenytoin are all options in the status epilepticus. Longer term, levetiracetam is a preferred option here and actually relatively safe in pregnancy. The background risk of congenital malformation in the general population is 2% and the, with levetiracetam, increase that by further 1%. In a status epilepticus, a loading dose of 60 mg per kg is recommended up to the maximum of 4.5 gram. It's delivered in the 100 ml of 0.9% sodium to write over an, uh, 10 minutes. Okay, next question, Dr. Surab. Hey, uh, Dr. Surab, I'll just yeah. put up, uh, I'll, I'll click this and I'll share this part. Okay. This them how it is given, no? It's important. <clears throat> Thank you. Another point actually with uh, seizures in pregnancy, as per neurologist, uh, you can actually continue all the drugs, whatever. Suppose the patient yeah. is planning for pregnancy, okay? If the patient has already planned for pregnancy, then you can change into all the lemotrigine, which is the best possible drug that you can give. <clears throat> and if the patient is, suppose, already pregnant, uh, except for valproate, for which you have to really plan and do away with uh, if the patient is stable, uh, you have to slowly taper off uh, them, uh, this one, valproate, and, uh, and go to another drug like lemotrigine or something like that. And uh, the uh, other drugs you can continue actually. You shouldn't change as per a neurologist. But the doctor, I Mura, I've seen one question in the sodium <laughs> valproate also. They are trying to continue. Yes. You have to continue continue for risk benefit. <laughs> yeah, they are saying that if you stop, there is a high chance of seizure. Yes, see, that, that is the, okay. so we that have is to continue it dangerous. along with large amount of folic acid. Yes. Okay. Okay. Patient thank you. Thank you. More, dan- okay. more dangerous. So here they are also continue with the sodium valproate. Okay. 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 Uh, what is the question? Flu like jaundice. 21 year old student present to the uh, she has uh, suffered from the flu like uh, illness over the 48 years she states that she had a uh, one yes. previous episode of jaundice four years ago she has resolved as spontaneously okay this one is uh, gilbert. gilbert okay mm-hmm. so yes. 46 year old man complains of epigastric abdominal pain soon after eating and gradual weight loss and diarrhea for the past six to eight months. He drinks two large <sighs> glasses of wine each evening and smokes 10 to 20 cigarettes per day. According to his wife, he drank more alcohol in the past. He takes no regular medication. His blood pressure is 110 by 72. Uh, abdomen is soft, non-tender. Body mass index is 22. Hemoglobin 10.9. MCV raised. And uh, platelet, sodium, potassium, creatinine, everything normal. Next investigation. So TTG. No. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 Alcoholic. Yeah. yeah, alcoholic also. So, next question. Langhans. <laughs> Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? A uh, 35 year old man comes to the hematology clinic for review following the lymph node biopsy. He has had a chronic cough and for the past two months and his pleuritic chest pain. Pain is in his right femur and the generalized lymphadenopathy. He also has a macular rash over the 
height. Mm -hmm. The biopsy from the size actually lymph node is shown below. How can we see that it is longer than this? Can someone explain the slide, please? Like, uh, how can we define that this is longer hands? Different shit from other diagnosis. I mm, I'll give I'll give more slides in the group. Okay. Okay. okay Will it be okay? okay? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Man. Because, uh, wait, I'll keep the differentials here. Huh? Okay. Even I'm not good at this, but I can share some. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Next. Read this. The yeah. The infiltrating immune cells seen here are the large ovoid mononuclear cells with the indented nucleus. This acquires either a kidney or a coffee bean shape depending on where the indentation is. The cytoplasm is homogeneous and the eosinophilic. The presence of the bone, lung and the skin involvement with the lympho lymphadenopathy fits with the diagnosis of Langerhans cell cystocytosis which is must, uh, most likely to present in adults around the age of 35. Given there is a multi-system involvement, systemic chemotherapy is required. Methotrexate, prednisolone, and the vinblastine with the, each up to the moderate dose are used. Eighty-six year old woman admitted to the emergency department having collapsed in the morning service at church, uh, apparently fifth time uh, that has been fainted over the past six months. She has previously inferior wall uh, MI and the text number of the medication including Ramipril, Indepamide, Atorvastatin and Visoprolol. Her pulse is 30 and uh, the blood pressure is 90 by 16. And the hemoglobin, WBC, platelet, sodium, potassium, everything normal. Ejection fraction 40%. Dr. Priyanka, what will we do? Your favorite question from yesterday's <laughs> discussion. <laughs> this one is complete herbal inferior volume, yeah, but okay. it is previous yeah. one. I think press, uh, permanent yes, pacemaker here. Yes, at least two, one block. Complete heart block. All right, complete heart block. And this one is earlier thing, but this one is inferior volume. I look a uh, fastest question there was. Uh, Actually, I got confused with these questions only. Yeah, actually, okay, what you... happens is that if you get an anterior wall MI, okay, uh, mm -hmm. uh, anterior wall MI, you, it, it shouldn't have a, a block, okay, because uh, yeah. anterior wall MI, the arteries are going to the other side. Yeah, it doesn't not supplied really by go the into the, yeah. yeah, it's not supplied by the RCA. So, yeah, in inferior I, I wall MI, you can think. Yeah, I read that uh, if anterior wall MI and patient is having CHV, this means there is a large amount, massive uh, MI, means so yes. very much uh, uh, areas are involved. Area so we is have involved. to go for that permanent pacemaker. But uh, uh, I read one question somewhere, they didn't say that. They said that if the patient is asymptomatic, we can absorb him. That was got confused. But, I don't think so. It's the option possible. Okay. I will ask a cardiologist as well. <laughs> Anybody can ask a cardiologist. No, that's a fact. Uh, what they do, yeah. they, because they do it daily. Okay, yeah. We are just reading. They, they do it daily. Yes. But the questions are what the RCP want to know. <laughs> that is the problem. No, no. RCP won't change that much because uh, in uh, as far as the heart goes, Everything is same. Okay. Uh, this patient has an atrial tachycardia uh, with the junctional escape rhythm and is a complete heart block. The only reasonable intervention is a permanent pacemaker even if her, heart, uh, her ventricular rate recovers over the next few hours. At the least, a dual chamber device is required and the dual atrial leads may be considered given the presence of atrial fibrillation. A uh, 67-year-old man uh, comes to the clinic for review. He has a frequent falls and reports erectile dysfunction over the past six months, he, for which he was purchased over-the-counter sildenafil. He has a two episodes of uh, urinary incontinence. Apart from the asthma, he is usually well. Uh, blood pressure okay uh, lying and the postural drop of 35 on systolic blood pressure on his standing. He has a gait ataxia, rigidity and tremor worse on the left than the right and the fundoscopy is unremarkable. And so, uh, investigation normal. I miss it. Yeah. 
ियोग्राफी डायग्नोसिस और द symptomatic the in pissing indigestion hmm is it due to like a small bowel overgrowth coming up in the heart in the heart throat the indigestion is there na indigestion is indigestion is there is it malabsorption like uh, actually what does it mean with indigestion like it doesn't mean that only that malabsorption but go for esophageal manometry because acid coming up heart throat because this fa- this okay. motility will uh, me, it, there yeah. are no red flags you can just give a trial of metrazone <laughs> <laughs> but this is but a patient to, of ren- yeah, uh, ren- ren- uh, yeah, the scleroductile and these yeah. are things. no uh, next step most is for next step they are asking uh, so patient uh, gi yeah. symptoms manometer mm-hmm. A patient with the systemic sclerosis is likely diagnosed here, given the presence of peripheral calcinosis, scleroductile, and telangiectasia suffered from the esophageal dysmotility because of her sclerotic process affecting the smooth muscle. Lower esophageal pressure is commonly decreased in the systemic sclerosis and can measure can be measured using manometry. Prokinetic agents such as the domperidone may be useful in relieving symptoms, as may calcium channel antagonists, which can relax the lower esophageal insulator. So here we use a prokinetic agents, not that PPI, uh, domperidone and uh, that uh, other calcium channel blocker. Is uh, sorry, esophageal dysmotility can present as a dysphagia or the sensation of food being stuck in the throat. in the patient with the persistent symptoms despite the twice daily ppi therapy we suggest a trial of prokinetic agent like metoclopramide cisapride domperidone uh, through calopride and to relieve this uh, symptoms uh, these drugs act by the increasing esophageal and sphincter pressure and the improving the peristalsis and the enhancing the gastric emptying other very common dis- uh, disorder is the gerd which is required medical attention so breath test uh, let me read this one breath test a small bowel bacterial overgrowth is seen in this patient with the systemic sclerosis and can be diagnosed with the hydrogen breath test uh, usual symptoms of the bacterial overgrowth include the abdominal bloating uh, irucation eru- and the anorexia not the symptoms reported here yeah because he is complaining of uh, indigestion reflux. so indigestion is yeah, not reflux, a, reflux. A reflux. No, no read the last line patient's main reflux. complaint is uh, reflux yeah. Mm-hmm. It more goes with like a dyspepsia, like this. Yeah, thing. because esophageal problem, not from the uh, intestinal problem. So that is the confusing part with the indigestion. Yeah, the definitely. Yeah. They will give us confusing thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What are the most likely diagnosis? Okay. A twenty-year-old student who returned from the three weeks of the trip from the tropical India and Myanmar present with the intermittent fever thirty-eight point nine three every three days. Okay, every three days he informs you that the took malaria prophylaxis during his trip and the temperature thirty-eight, pressure hundred by eighty, pulse of hundred five, and he looks flushed and the mild abdominal tenderness on the palpation. Hemoglobin nine point five, well, uh, WBC eleven point two, platelet is one twenty three. That is low. It, everything low WBC raised CRP is okay. This one is uh blood culture De- okay thick and thick and yeah malaria every oh. three day fever. Yeah. Go to the next the fever fits with the diagnosis of the tertian uh, malaria. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step? 
67-year-old man present to the urgent heart failure clinic complaining of the increasing tiredness, shortness of breath, edema two weeks after the increasing the beta blocker dose of the 2.5 to 5 of the bisoprolol. Other medication include the ramipril, 10 mg for uh, furosemide 40, a pressure of 124 by 84, pulse of 85, and he is fitting edema. He has a fitting edema to the mid scene bilaterally and the crackles to the mid zone on the scultation of the chest. So, uh, hemoglobin 121, WBC, platelet sodium potassium, everything normal. Creatinine is a little bit high. So, add amplorinone, uh, 25, indepamide, uh, decrease bisoprolol, increase ferrosamide, stop bisoprolol. Add amplorinone. Uh, no, amplorinone we cannot add. Like your potassium is 4.5, 4.7, right? More than 4.5. Yes, yes, more than 4.5, we cannot add. Okay. Maybe we have to increase the fuel semi dose. Like it's only for but creatinine dose. is increasing, it will also cause this problem. Hmm. But problem is, uh, he has got significant overload, right? Eating yeah. too much. So, what's about uh, reducing a beta blocker dose? Beta blocker, we should not be reducing beta blocker, right? Beta yes. blocker not causing this uh, fluid overload. The main drug for heart failure, right? Yeah. Also, like they say that pulse is high, 85. Yeah, yeah, that's the another thing. Okay, answer. Probably for to 80 milligrams. And yeah. Okay, uh, this is a, a standard guidance of where the dose of beta blocker has been increased in a patient with the heart failure and there are symptoms of fluid overload. The bisoprolol dose is only half of the optimal therapeutic dose and the pulse rate is still above target of 85. The dose of the furosemide should be doubled uh, in attempt to the control this patient symptoms. Okay, there the uh, pulse rate is 85, so no problem is beta blocker. And uh, aplerinone uh, has a positive impact on the outcomes in the heart failure. It is relatively ineffective at controlling the fluid overload as versus as increase in the loop diuretics, the intervention of choice here. But in the past, just there's a two to three question. It uh, 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 the potassium level is around five, but they are also adding there. Uh, yeah, right. They actually they are considering the acute condition here. We need. Yeah, the... that, there is also acute condition, but they are saying it is the mortality benefit of that adding this. I think so. There are three or four questions in the in yeah. past questions actually. This one. This is a very confusing aspect. Yeah, yeah. Practically, I will also go with frisamide only. Yeah. Uh, with this uh, sort of yeah, a patient who has got crackles midway to his chest. That is how we proceed, right? Also, one yeah. more thing they said, like a beta blocker should not be used like unless the lung is not dry. Yeah, it has to be the uh, patient blocker, has to be... Beta blocker is not using the acute condition, acute edema, acute uh, heart failure. Acute LVF, yeah. Patient is, yeah, patient is chronic LVF. So we can because use the lung is dry, then better to go with beta blocker. Yeah. We don't stop actually once if, uh, suppose a patient uh, is uh, a patient of heart failure, already known patient, and uh, the patient has uh, developed uh, some crackles. We usually don't stop the beta blocker. Yeah, yeah like a because crackles, you, use, yeah. you use yeah. add like a massive overload. Okay. Like very well. uh, which of the following is the most appropriate way to manage the patient's symptoms? A 35-year-old man. Flu-like symptoms. Uh, okay, flu-like symptoms, pain over the anterior <sighs> neck, palpitation, okay, ibuprofen, liver, ibuprofen. Hmm. Any more questions can be added with this? Uh, are they going to ask this straightforward or what? Mm -hmm. They might give a scintigraphy test, I think so. There is a one question. There is a one question. Uh, oh. Like uh, a pregnant lady, okay, with the subacute thyroiditis, what you will do? Patient is in the second trimester. Mm, what you can mean? add an uh, ibuprofen. only. But in case of first trimester, you can't give this ibuprofen because it causes miscarriage to the patient. Miscarriage. And if yeah, and if it is if you give the patient in the third trimester ibuprofen, that will cause no. the uh, blockage of the arteries. Yeah, patent doctor's arteries is closer early. Blocked. Blo early closer, and that will lead to the pulmonary arterial hypertension. Mm -hmm. So we have to think of yeah, because yeah. the 
yeah we reassure yes, them we can't yes, give this ibuprofen in the first trimester and in the third trimester just only in the second trimester second trimester you can give yeah okay so this one is the extra level extra level mma na what mma middle meningeal artery yeah uh, what is the uh, most uh, appropriate treatment for the patient <coughs> nothing nothing reassure patient control her we paracetamol if at all needed yeah can we use prednisone over here first trimester try to avoid usually Usually and if at all it is needed very low dose very low dose yeah prednisone we have to avoid uh, all over in the pregnancy because chance of transfer to the baby a 27 year old man uh, comes to the sexually transmitted disease clinic complaining of painful postulant uh, urethral well, discharge he began to relationship with the new partner comes to the weeks earlier microscopy shows gram negative diplococci so what will we give give prednisone If patient is not agreeing to ceftriaxone, then ceftriaxone because this is again I am. Ah yeah, ceftriaxone give four hundred milligrams and plus two plus my two gram. Ceftriaxone plus two and two plus my two gram start. And in case of uh, that uh, disseminated is one gram uh, seven IV days. IV no? or for seven days. Yeah, I always forget. Okay, MRI is the point five centimeter pituitary tumor shows. And the patient is having prolactin is uh, two five uh, okay twenty five sixty seven. Bromocriptin. Yeah, bromocriptin. Any pregnancy related thing? No, not given. So, if there was an option of uh, cabergolin over here. Yeah, but uh, if she uh, yeah we can go for the cabergolin. But if she uh, planning for the pregnancy, then go for the bromocriptin. Yeah. And if she already pregnant, then a stop. Yeah. No point. <laughs> Don't stop that one. Yeah. Pardon? Hello. Uh mm huh. -hmm. What you say? Don't stop. Okay. No, don't stop the pregnancy. Uh, this one is. <laughs> okay, WBC is twenty three thousand, and uh, cause the anemia patients anemia. They are asking likely cause of anemia. Patient receiving uh, okay seventy four years CLL patient. Like uh, What's the shortage of? Yeah. Autoimmune. Yeah, autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Warm type. Yeah. We'll do that first here, no? Yeah. Yeah. Direct anti-globulin first. first. We'll, we'll, yeah, yeah, we'll do peripheral smear with okay, that let, with yeah. retic, mm -hmm. and then uh, LDH and haptoglobulin. Haptoglobulin, haptoglobulin will be done. Uh, yeah. So, what is the management of the mm. warm? What I mean, we give steroid only here. Right. Anything and autoimmune? Go for steroid. Yeah, what is the treatment for that uh, cold autoimmune hemolytic anemia? Cold treat that treat uh, disease. Underlying cause and other. Cause yeah. And that. And there is a bortezomib also given. Second line, first line treat the underlying cause, yeah. and if it is not treatable, uh, you can use also that rituximab. And if it is not, uh, third line is that. Uh, What I said, what is it? What is it? No, it's just one minute. Huh? I'll just check one. It's given in past tests, I think. Past test manage uh, management of that autoimmune. Second one, you said. Second line. Second line in disease. Hey, also uh, do explain it to me in case of CLL. Okay, there are two, th three things are there: warm autoimmune, uh, glucocorticoids, and rituximab. Cold autoimmune hemolytic anemia. First line is uh, rituximab and uh, benda that whatever benda must. Benda must end. Ah, okay. <laughs> Second line is uh, bortezomib. Okay. Whereas in case of PCH paroxysmal cold hemoglobin urea, first line is glucocorticoid. Uh, yeah. Plasma pheresis also used. 
Yes. Plasma ferris is for the IgM to be taken out. Okay. Then uh, bendamustine and retax to be given. And then wait, huh? Obviously, glucocorticoid free. Fludarabine can be also given. Bortezomib, second line. Hey, Dr. Priyanka, all are gone or not? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Mm. We're done, no? Yes, we're uh -huh. done. Internet. Most of the people are gone suddenly. <laughs> oh, oh, I think so. Paper also then we are also gone. <laughs> think, I think. We can also use immunoglobulin, right? In the program, or German hemolytic anemia. So, yeah. IVIG. Hey, this is all. You can give anything. <laughs> Once it is autoimmune, it <laughs> seems. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Dr. Saran. Okay, next, uh, 11.30 or uh, later? Uh, 11.30 will be half an hour from now. Yeah, yeah. it's only 11. Uh, for, for Bangladesh, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, however you feel like. Okay. Fine, thank you. Okay.